What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So I want to talk about the life expectancy and Social Security, because in the next two years, you're going to hear politicians coming out talking about raising the full retirement age. They're going to be talking about let's raise it to 69. Let's raise it to 70. And I want to talk a little bit about this because there are different methods, different ways that we can reform Social Security, which needs to be reformed. But raising the full retirement age, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it's the best way to go. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you're letting us know that you want to get notified every day, and you should be getting notifications every day. If you're not getting notified every day, please let me know in the comment section below, and I will reach out to YouTube and let them know. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to read the life expectancy, because we know already that politicians have been talking about raising the, the full retirement age to 69 or 70. We'll just say 70 because that's what I'm hearing the most of. 69, I think what they would probably do is raise it the way that they raised, raised it before back in 1983. And that was the last time that we saw any type of uh, reform of Social Security. So they raised it from, 66, from 65 to 66 or 67, uh, depending on when you were born. So they could do something very similar to that in the future where they raise it to 69 or 70, depending on when you were born. So let's take a look at the life expectancy right now in 2022. So, and I just uh, pulled this off Google. This is the CDC. It says, what is normal life expectancy in the U.S.? Life expectancy at birth for women in the United States dropped 0.8 years from 79.9 years in 2020 to 79.1 years in 2021, while the life expectancy for men dropped one full year from 74.2 years in 2020 to 73.2 years in 2021. Okay, so that is the life expectancy right now. So 73.2 years for men. And so just let that sink in. For most people, you're working 30 years, maybe even 40 years. You're paying into Social Security. And then when it comes time to collect for men, they might collect, if, if we move the full retirement age to, to 70, they might be able to collect three years. Three years. And for women, they might be able to collect about nine years. And so that is, I mean, you can say people are living longer, people are living longer, and I understand this is an average amongst everyone. But when we look at this, we have to face the reality that if that's the average then you could come in at, at, at that average, right? People are coming in above that. People are coming in at that average, and people are coming in below that average. So some people might not ever see a dime. They might work their whole life paying to, to, to FICA and not see anything when it comes to uh, any, any Social Security or anything like that. And so it, this, this is something, and like I said, we're going to hear more politicians talk about this, mainly because now we have split government. Now we have Republicans in control of the House, and generally Republicans have been talking about this, raising the full retirement age. And so we might hear of bills in the House that they're trying to get passed that talk about this very same thing, raising the full retirement age. And so raising the full retirement age to 70, that's a cut to Social Security, and that will be a cut to millions and millions of people who will start receiving Social Security at 70 because the life expectancy has has gone down. It's actually, it should be going up, but due to the pandemic, that's the main reason why we're, we're seeing uh, drops in numbers when it comes to the life expectancy. It will start to increase again, hopefully in the future, but right now that's what we're looking at. Now all we can go off is what we see in front of us. And so when you start hearing these politicians talk about this, it's, it's very important for you to push back. Push back and say, look, there are other ways to do this. And so what are some of the other ways? Now, when we're talking about like a Senator Bernie Sanders plan of, of the $200 raise for Social Security, you're going to need more money because they want to raise the $200 raise for Social Security, and then they also want to address the trust fund issues. And so by doing that, you're going to need to collect more money. Uh, the one way that I think they could reform Social Security, uh, not, not necessarily do the $200 raise for Social Security, 
but the way that they can reform it. Because like I said in, in my last video, when it comes to the $200 raise for Social Security, highly unlikely that we'll see anything because you have split government. Okay, and you have some politicians that are just not on board for any type of expansion of Social Security. They want to address the trust fund, but the trust fund only. So if we were to address the trust fund only, one way that they can do this is by raising the FICA tax, raising that payroll tax 1%. Raise it 1%. Right now it's at 6.2%. That's what you pay. And then 6.2% your employer pays. Raise it 1% more. So now you're paying 7.2% and your employer is paying 7.2%. That would be the better option because that could address the trust fund as well as not really, I mean, you're not going to have people really feeling uh, that, that, that pain too much. I mean, it's 1%, okay? And it's for your own good because it will allow you to retire at 66 or 67 instead of retiring at 70. And it makes sense to do that because you should be able to receive more money on the back end. So when you retire, you should be able to get more or get money for a longer period of time. And so that's the solution that I have when it comes to Social Security reform. And like I said, Senator Bernie Sanders has a $200 raise for Social Security. That, that's a bill that he wants uh, to get through and they want to tax the, the rich. OK, so that's kind of the way that they want to go about it or raise the the maximum that right now it's 147,000 will actually go up next year just due to to cola increase but they want to raise that even higher uh, so more people are paying into the payroll tax because at 147,000 anything that you make over that you don't pay into the payroll tax so they want to raise that uh, lift that up so it's higher that's another option but the easiest option for politicians to do is raising the FICA tax. However, politicians don't want to raise taxes. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. They don't want to raise taxes ever. And so that's why they haven't moved on this because even though it's a 1%, let's say if it's a 1% raise, they don't want to be known as raising taxes on the American people. And so they're just going to sit on the sidelines. But the only problem is when it comes to that 11th hour, when we're in 2030, and people are thinking, okay, well, the trust fund's going to run out of money any day. That's when people are really going to be upset because they're going to see a 20% decrease in their Social Security benefits. And so something has to be done. And a leader needs to step up. Even though it's a hard thing to do, that's what leaders do. Leaders make those hard decisions. But someone needs to step up and say, hey, this has, we have to do this in order to prolong Social Security. If we don't, this is what we're going to see in return. And so we'll, we'll have to follow the story and see where it goes. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And then I want to show you one more thing, too, because uh, this is interesting as well. And so when it comes to the life expectancy for people in poverty, it's even worse. So the gap in life expectancy between the richest 1% and the poorest 1% of individuals was 14.6 years, and that's for men, and then 10.1 years for women. Okay, so there's a difference there. And if you can really look at 14 years, I mean, you're talking about people that are the, the lower 1%, they're, they're dying very young, very young. I mean, they're dying in their, their, their 60s. And so when it comes down to it, we also have to factor that in. A lot of people who are receiving Social Security and, and rely on Social Security, they're at that lower level. They might not be at the lowest 1%, but they're at that lower level. And so their life expectancy is even less than what we were looking at when we we're looking at the averages overall. And so I want to know what you guys think about this. And I also want to know, how are you guys handling things? Are you only receiving Social Security? Are you receiving Social Security and a pension? Are you receiving Social Security and a 401k? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.